Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do an introduction to functions. So we will look at what a function is, what a function isn't, different representations of functions, and how to tell if something is a function. So I wanted to start today with some words of wisdom from Uncle Iroh from Avatar The Last Airbender. And he said it is important to draw wisdom from different places. If you take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. And I interpret this as him saying, don't just go to one place for all your answers. So wisdom can come from all different parts of life. Um, you know, don't think all of the answers are going to be in one place at one time. It's all going to come from different places, maybe some that you might not expect. So some good words for today to get us started. Um, so first, what is a function? So a function is a relationship where each input has one output. So each input has one output is going to be the big thing for today. The value that is put into a function is the input and the result is the output. So let's say I have a machine. I will put in the input and what comes out is the output and then the machine is my function. Now, input and output are just some words that we use when we talk about function. Input is also what the x values are. We also might call it the domain. The domain is the set of all x values. And we might also um, see it called the independent variable, so the um, variable that is independent. But any of these words are really interchangeable. Today, we're mostly going to be seeing input and x values. So x is input, input is x. Output is what comes out of a function, and uh, that can also be the y values. It's also known as the range. The range is the set of all y values, and you might also see it called the dependent variable. So it's dependent on whatever the independent variable is. But we will mostly see output and y values. So the output are, um, are the y values. So let's look at the different ways we can represent functions. We're going to start with the mapping diagram. So this is a mapping diagram. We might see it as a table. So same information, just put into a table of x and y, input and output. We can have ordered pairs. Again, an ordered pair is in the form x comma y. So I have my x's and my y's, my x and my y, my x and my y, and you can see it matches with the table. So my x's are 2, 5, and 10, and in my table they're 2, 5, and 10, and same with the y's. And we'll also see functions as graphs. So here are the points graphed. They can just be graphed as individual points, and you might also see um, functions as continuous lines. Um, we're going to start with the mapping diagram. This is a pretty common way to um, represent a function. So the inputs or the x values are in the left, and the outputs or the y values are on the right. Oops. And um, the arrows show us which input values go with which output variables. So the 10 goes with the 15, the 20 goes with 45, the 30 goes with 25, and the 40 goes with 35. And this is a function. Each input value has one output value. So each input value goes to one output. And that goes along with our definition of a function. Here's another mapping diagram. And I have 2, 4, and 3 going to 20, 30, and 40. This is not a function, and this is not a function because this input value 2 has two output values. And my definition of function says that um, we can only have one output for each input, and this input has two outputs, so that goes against my function rule. So this is what we're going to be looking at, is is this mapping diagram a function or not? So in this example, I have one, two, and three. I have three inputs going to one output. Each input has one output, even though it's the same one, it's still only one. So this is a function. Each input has one output. 
here I have 1 going to 5 and 7. So this input or domain, this input has two outputs. That goes against the rule. So this is not a function. And a quick way to know if a mapping diagram is a function or not is that if there is more than one arrow coming from one input, then it is not a function. So I have two arrows coming from this one, which is against the rule of a function. So this is not a function. But I only have one arrow coming from each number here. So this checks out, this is a function. So that's the rule with the mapping diagram. Let's look at tables. Oh, my character. So tables we see usually x in the left, y on the right. These are my inputs. Oops. These are my inputs. My x's are my inputs and y's are my outputs. So you might hear me say x and y or I might say input and output. So here's an example of a function. I have all these x values. They're all different and they're all going to one y value. So I have negative 2 and 2, negative 2, negative 1 and 2, 0 and 6, 1 and 10, 2 and 14. I have all different x values going to an output y value. On this table, I have my x's and my y's again, but if I read through, I have two ones here, and this is not a function. The x value 1 has two different outputs. So this goes against my rule where e an input can only have one output. But this input 1 has two outputs. I have two outputs for the number 1. So that goes against my function rule. Let's look at some examples. So I have a table here. I have all these x values. I'm going to scan them. They all seem to be different and they're all going to an output. They all have an output. So this is good. This is a function. Let's look at this one. I'm gonna scan them. I see that I have two of the same x value going to two different outputs. These are different numbers, seven and 14. This is not a function because I have the same input going to two different outputs. A trick for tables, if there are repeating x values in your table, just like here, it is not a function. So if there are repeating x values in the table, it is not a function. Let's look at ordered pairs, just another way that we represent x and y values. So my x's are the inputs, y is the output. And let's say I'm just given this set. So this is just a set of ordered pairs and we use these curly brackets to show a set. So here's an X and a Y, here's an X and a Y. It's just a bunch of different points. I could plot these all on a coordinate plane and kind of see what that graph looks like. But just know it's just a set of ordered pairs. This is a function because each input, which is my x values, has one output value. So I have all different x values going to y values. Here's another example, and I have the same x value here. I have two of the same x value going to different y values. So this is not a function. The x value 2 has two outputs. There are two different outputs for the number um, two. And that goes against my function rule. So a trick for um, looking at ordered pairs, if there are repeating x values, lots of typos here, if there are repeating x values, it is not a function. So if the x values, the x part of the, court of the ordered pair, the x coordinate, if they repeat, it is not a function. Um, finally, we can represent functions with graphs. So a graph is just taking ordered pairs and putting them into the graph, or you can graph something like this and put it in. But here's two graphs, and these are two functions. Each input has one output, um, and we'll see in the next slide how to tell the difference between a function and not a function. But just know that you may see functions be 
just points on a graph or a continuous line. So the way to test if a graph is a function is to use the vertical line test. The vertical line test is a test used to tell if a graph is a function. Draw a vertical line and see how many points it touches on the graph. If it only ever touches one point, the graph is a function. So I'm going to take a blue pen out and I'm going to draw vertical lines on my graph and see how many points it touches. So if I draw a line here, this vertical line only touches my graph at one point, so that's good. One point, good. Let's just test it in a few more spots. So right here, touches it once, that's good. I do over here, only touches my graph once, that's good. So I'm going to say that this is a function. The vertical line only touches my graph once, so we're good. It passes the vertical line test. Let's try this circle. If I draw a line through this part of the circle, my line touches the graph twice. Touches the graph twice. This fails the vertical line test already. I have two points touching the graph. This is not a function. And you can see I can draw a line here, touches the graph twice, not a function. Let's look at this graph. This is a fun looking graph. I could draw a line right here and it only touches the graph once there. So that is only one time. But if I draw a line through this part of my graph, the line touches my graph twice. So this is not a function. If it hits the graph more than once, it's not a function. Another way to see this is I have repeating x values. If I go to where x is 1, when x is 1, y is 1 and negative 1. I cannot have repeating x values in a function. So the big takeaway of this is if there are any repeating inputs or x values, the relation is not a function.